I'm so excited about today's guest. We have been trading messages back and forth and finally we get to see each other in person. That makes me so, so happy. I'm a big fan of hers and everything she does. Fellow mama, actress, dancer. So, I mean, like, honestly, so many things. Um, it's Heather Morris. She also has a podcast that's like an audio drama with a star-studded cast. I'm so proud of everything that she does and happy to have her here today on this episode of Vulnerable. What's up, girl? Hey! Hey, mama! I know, we were trying so hard to get together for this Ye years? for a while. <laughs> And I was like, well, I don't have anything to promote. And I finally have something to promote. So I, so I feel like I may have gone out to you too. Like even when I was doing my like cooking stuff, like, I don't know. You've been on my like list of folks that I've like just really like liked. And it's so funny to me. We were just talking about this, how in casting and somewhat like when you see people on social media, you kind of, you try to intuit like what kind of person they would be, what kind of mm -hmm. connection they would be or friend or resource or part of your network. And it's not, I don't think it's transactional at all. I just think like you look at a person, you're like, oh, this is what they're about. Yeah. And also though, like some people have a different persona in real life than they do on social media because I definitely, I mean, I'm me through and through and I think you are as well. Yeah. But like Heather Morris you meet at Blue Bottle or the coffee shop across the street is going to be very different than like who I am on camera to like a stranger. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. if somebody came up and started talking to me, I'm very to myself and quiet and mm -hmm. Once I'm on camera or once I know you really well, then I'll be like super loud and talkative, which I think that's just kind of like safety too. It is safety for sure. I think people do need to kind of factor that into that experience because a lot of people, when you're a public person, um, I think they're like, I have rights, I have like land rights and you're the <laughs> body of territory that I have rights to. Yes. But, but, I, but I do think that, uh, you know, there are some, and also I don't think there's a correlation directly that I know of between outside of getting canceled. <laughs> okay. And that's usually for a very okay. different reason yes. than not being nice to your fans. Yes. There, there we is know, we well, all know about toxic work environments. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I will say like, I have, I have a formula. Like when I meet a fan, I will always say, Hey, nice to meet you. I ask their name cause I need to remember their name. I'll say it three times. Oh, wow. And I always say, thank you for watching the show because it's always so genuine. Mm -hmm. Like I can tell how genuine they are when they come up to me and they really feel, cause a lot of fans for myself and for Naya as well, yeah. fans of the storyline are genuinely like you saved my life. And mm -hmm. so I'm always so grateful because that's who, that's who I get approached by is like mm -hmm. those people. Folks in the LGBTQ yes. plus community. Yeah. Okay. So that, I mean, we can speak to that. And trust me, like yeah. we've been doing everything we can to kind of understand the parameters of the strike and what, what our feedback was, just so I'm transparent with Heather here and um, you guys all listening or watching, is that um, we were told that if it comes up in conversation, you can mention that, you know, Heather was in Glee and on the set, like things happened or good and bad, good and bad and whatever. I just think that there are, there we are all trying to be so sensitive right now to that. Well, it's constantly changing too, because my manager, called me like before I <laughs> no, even did all this no. and she was like you can't do anything you can't yeah, talk about it and I scared. was like well Jen I I feel like we could so I think there's a fine line too though between supporting the cause and then being censored so like I just want to make sure that like everybody understands that it's a very complex issue that's like you're saying changing every day <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I'll say Which it I'll take do. the hit Glee <laughs> okay they had a they had a storyline yes okay um, with Naya Rivera, mm -hmm. and um, and actually, I feel like a terrible host. Uh, Heather came in, and she was super complimentary, and I was like, wow, that's so sweet. I just have to learn how to take a compliment better. <laughs> because you're such a great host. Oh, Like, wow. even now in conversation, I'm like, what are we talking about? And you're like, let me backtrack and go back to what we're talking about, because <laughs> I'll just start talking about a bunch of random things, and I'm like, oh, wait, ADD kicked in really hard. Oh, it's so true. Yeah. And then, like, how, and you know, I'll do, like, six a day. Um, and it's really lovely, Damn. but like towards, and we're on the third day now of me doing six day, but you're the first today. Yes. So that's, that's how I'm able to like scale it back. Good morning. And then you have to, to go them. back. Girl. To your That's daughter? what I'm trying to say is I'm not a good host because I didn't know that you had two kids. Oh. That, that well, makes me not only a bad host, a bad friend. But I don't post about them. And that's probably that why. Well, that's what you said. You were like, well, I've never seen them and we've only been social media friends. That's true. And and it's, it's well, but yeah. And now I'm, now I'm going to observe that and 
Um, but I'm so happy to hear that you're a mama. You have, you're a boy mom. Yeah, I'm a boy mom. What's that like? <laughs> I'm a girl mom. <laughs> Are you? Mm -hmm. God, that whole concept is weird to me. The whole boy, that's a whole different conversation. Oh, but sure. It's, um, we can have it. We can have it. <laughs> I don't know. My theory is like, <laughs> for some reason, I think it has to do with like the female testosterone. Because I was talking about this in a drunk conversation with moms the other night. Mm -hmm. And we, those we are were, fun conversations. It's really, we went to see the, <laughs> the movie about Pink and the Dolls. Uh -huh. Okay. Right. Barbie. Mm -hmm. right. Um, and they, we were all drinking and yeah. they were like, so fun. We were talking about uh, like our sex drive mm -hmm. and the moms with girls were say? like, I want to fuck my husband all the time. I have such a big sex drive and he doesn't want to. And wow. I was like, Especially Wait. after seeing the Barbie movie. Shmarby yeah. movie. <laughs> the Shmarby movie. <laughs> I was like, my libido is low. I don't have a large sex drive, which is pretty common for females. And the girl next to me was like, neither do I. I have boys. And I said, well, what if that's correlated? Like, what if... I don't know. This is just me in a weird space no? in my brain thinking mm -hmm. like, how, does it have to do with testosterone at the time? Interesting. I will, I will bust up that. Um, Tell me. Because I do not have a very high sex drive. Okay. Um, however, I could probably link that to sobriety. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Because <laughs> let me tell you, I'm sure that like my my drive in general prior to kids and um, I think it got definitely less and less. Uh, and that could be hormonal. You know, like yeah. I'm, I have melasma now and I'm like, what the fuck? Like somebody said melasma. that melasma is like you get patches of dark um, on your on your skin. Um, oh, OK. You can cover them unless they get really bad. But somebody told me. Oh yeah, like that's actually related to your hormones. People get it usually when they're pregnant. When they're pregnant, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh wow, like maybe I need to to look into all of that. You can get your hormones tested, right? I, yeah, I got mine tested. How do you? I, fine. That's, I, I, I just went to, to my gynecologist and I was like, hey, you just get a, a blood draw. A, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And I was like, my libido's low, um, like really, really, really low. Mm -hmm. That's like the stage of my life. Yeah, my, was, but mine too. Yeah. I want to make sure that you feel seen because for you're sure, not alone. For sure. I know I'm not alone. <laughs> like, I think it's, it's also just common. like you are a busy person. And I'm not saying that like when you're bored, you're horny, but y you are. My sex drive is <laughs> larger in the morning. Like the second I wake up, I'm like, let's go. Let's have fun all mm -hmm. day. I could dance That's around the idea until like 3 p.m. And then three o'clock, I'm like, it's time to shut off. I don't want anything to do with it. Sweatpants anything. going on. Sweatpants are Tying going on. Tying a double knot. I'm laying in a bed. <laughs> like a board and tying that. a double knot <laughs> i've seen that i don't know what movie that was they're like no 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 once she puts the sweatpants on i don't get anything <laughs> it's done um wow okay so wh 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 are you in la yeah okay so you, you i'm like suburb la I'm okay a suburb suburb lady okay got it i was gonna say because like what is it like being here i moved to orange county once we had our well actually once we had our first I kind of like had to peace out and go down mm -hmm. the freeway and be like, I need at least an hour. I need to disconnect from life. I think it was. It was a disconnect from just like a lot of bad memories and then like expectations. And um, I would just gotten into uh, like creating content. So I really didn't, I didn't know what I was doing per se. So I thought that that like distance was like healthy for me. Mm -hmm. um, what has it been like for you? Like since Glee and like in general with all the projects that you do and like the dance stuff, the dance content and also like the dance competitions that you're you're posting about. Mm -hmm. What have you been up to? <laughs> <laughs> I know, tell everybody. Well, I mean, so since Glee happened, mm -hmm. since that whole era of my life, yeah. Um, I mean, I did go back into the auditioning scene and I was trying to make it as an actor, which I still am. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love to perform no matter what. And that's mm -hmm. why I got into the podcast that I'm that I'm here for, The Bystanders, mm -hmm. um, just because I love to create and I love to do. And it doesn't necessarily mean like I have to be on camera all the time um, to do that. Yeah. You know, I, I got into writing for the second season of The Bystanders. Um, but I do love to create on TikTok and on Instagram and just like, even if I'm not going to make it, I like to write skits mm -hmm. on my computer just to feel like that creative outlet. Mm. But for me, like auditioning, I never auditioned for Glee in the first place. Like I never went into the room and said the lines out loud. I was you know, I'm in acting classes, but I was primarily a dancer. And then one day I was like, I'm going to be an actress now. <laughs> and then... 
my um, my uh, boss at the time, Zach Woodley, who was the choreographer, mm -hmm. was going to Ryan Murphy because he was working as the choreographer for Fergley. Mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, I have this assistant. She wants to be an actress. Maybe consider her for the show. Um, and I didn't even go in to read. He just saw me and saw me dance and was like, great, we need somebody to sway in the background. Let's hire her. <laughs> sway in the background. Sway in the background. Maybe <laughs> a, a little heightened of a level. Uh -huh. So I got it that way. And so once Glee was over, I had no audition experience. Fascinating. I had no idea how to be in a room with a casting director being the only one. Like I had definitely been as a dancer where there's like 20 to 50 people in a room auditioning and you stand in the line and they like typecast you. Um, and same with commercials too. Sometimes you're like in a group with 10 people. So auditioning for me was really tough. I was so nervous. I had a really hard time because um, I didn't feel like it was the same as being on camera, you know, where you like rehearse it a bunch of times. I felt like I had to go in there and show them what I had right then and there and I only got one chance. And mm -hmm. um, so that was challenging. I loved when the pandemic started that I got to audition on tape and be in control. And now, as we all know, it's like, it's really getting old. Yeah. And I'm like, I actually want to go back into the room. And That's fascinating because so you're, so even though it was sort of a daunting experience to, to come from Glee to then sort of like the, the unemployment line, so mm -hmm. to speak, for actors, um, you had a, you had an okay experience in, in auditioning. It was like you had to learn how to do it. But, I had to learn. It definitely yeah. got better, but mm -hmm. I still, I think when I got more comfortable was when maybe like right before the pandemic hit. So I started to of do course. better <laughs> in the room and I was like, oh, I feel more comfortable. I mm -hmm. was like going to coaches and rehearsing it before. So it wasn't mm -hmm. the first time I did it in the room, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then the pandemic hit and it was like, okay, well, everything's on tape now. So you can kind of be in control. Yeah. Anyways, so yeah, I, that, that, whole experience of like being not so great at auditioning kind of led me to just like all the outskirts of of creating and and making content for TikTok and Instagram um which really kind of just is like very connective right would you yeah. say like do, do, have you felt like because I've seen you on certain comment um like comment feeds or whatever of content that I've commented on and I always love to see you pop up because I was like I know she doesn't comment a lot but but have you enjoyed sort of like you know, engaging with your fans and on like the social media. It's I do. Okay. I really do. I think it's fun because the fan base that I have now, um, they're genuinely here for me. I'm I'm guessing you're exactly the same. Like they genuinely like Heather Morris mm -hmm. and they like what I'm making. Um, and I don't feel threatened anymore because I think for a while I felt threatened because at a certain point like you probably felt we were very big. Mm -hmm. Like we were the Beatles Relevant. big. Yeah, Relevant. we were like I was huge. never Beatles big. You were. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I guess like Kim Possible was for sure. Like I'm just the voice, but people still marry me to her because like I was on other things as a face and like those all sort of were all promoing at the same time yeah. or whatever. But yeah, I think I think that that's really weird. Kim Possible I, will always be big though. I, In my hey, mind, I Kim Possible so much. is. Sorry. Not, that's not a promo. She's a character. Is I love goat. her so much. I can't. Okay. Um, she's my avatar. She's my avatar <laughs> on like our, you know, streaming service that will remain nameless. Yeah. Oh my God. I love it. I love it. <laughs> okay. So that's really cool. So what you're saying though is that. Yeah. So for, for that period when we were like Beatles, Beatles big, big <laughs> um, it, they were scary to me because I, like I said, when I first meet a fan, like I, I'm pretty internal and I'm not like. Hey, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. I'm like, oh, hey, well, it's I so great your to meet you. Co-stars probably were all like that too. Everybody was Naya really great like that? It seems like she would have been very. Naya actually, she would put on her shades and like really keep to herself. Hmm. You know what I mean? Like I think she tried to like keep a wall up. Hmm. Um, and then if we were in a scenario where there were fans, that's when it's like it goes down and you're there to say hi. Mm -hmm. But I think in real life. Um, for a while, it's hard because mm -hmm. you're like, well, I just want to be me in the setting that I always was. Mm -hmm. Whereas now the whole setting has changed because I'm now like the face of a show. I was, I was saying, like, would you have rather had like an exclusively like focused on dance uh, career like off the jump? Would you have rather just started like that or would you have I not? I did. That's what I thought. Yeah. But I'm saying like in terms of it being glee or... 
like something that was only exclusively about dance, um, like a dance show, so to speak, rather than be like, because I feel like in Hollywood, we see like the trajectory of like Jenna, right? Duan. Yes. I didn't want to say her last name wrong, but like Jenna, Jenna, I feel like she was very much known as a dancer um, for a really long time. And she just recently started to be able to like judge things. And I think like after her very high profile divorce, like she's come into her own and like she's utilized her social media to show people like I'm still here, I'm sexy, yeah. I'm dancing. Um, and also too, like I think like dancers, you guys are inherently like okay with utilizing your body on film. Right. It's like not unclean or like politicized. It's like, this is what I do. Right. I move my body. Yeah. I move it. I move it. I'm like a belly dancer. You don't want to see, you don't want to see me do that. <laughs> I thought it would be great. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I, if I were to be able to pick and choose, like cherry pick, I think it would have been so helpful to, because I wanted to be an actress from a young age. Okay. Um, I just didn't have the training and I was so hyper focused on dancing. And then my dad passed away when I was really young. I was 14 and I dove super deep into dance and how it made me feel and it kept me safe and kept me busy. Um, so that then later I just made that my persona as dance mm -hmm. instead of, you know, being an actress and a dancer and a singer. Um, cause I also did choir when I was young. So all those things kind of melted away and dance like came to the forefront. And so I wanted to be an actress. And then when I came to LA, I was taking classes and like trying to do that whole thing. But so it was actually kind of healing for you to be able to act as act just as much as the dancing part. Yes. For, okay. I find it very interesting. Like the dance mom culture, <laughs> you know, where I'm going with this. <laughs> I do too. It's like fascinating and weird. And did you gross. did you experience that? I know. Really? I did not. I knew maybe like one or two dance moms. Really? Yeah, but my studio did not cultivate the dance mom. Culture. Where where did you where did you grow up again? I grew up in Arizona. Okay. It was very competitive, but like moms weren't allowed in the studio. So it was competitive, but the moms weren't like a part of that. Absolutely not. Interesting. I mean, it's a TV show, so obviously they want it heightened. Uh, mm -hmm. As a mom, because I, I, I have two boys and we right. play baseball, like <gasps> baseball is even worse than watching dance moms. Like, I've the heard. parents are nuts. <sighs> I'm like, this is a show. I want to pitch this. I know for real, right? Pitch, pitch this. I want to pitch this. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. I've heard that, that, um, you know, it almost chases people away from the sport because you're yeah. already inherently risking your child's like, you know, they could get injured. They could get head damage, especially yeah. with football. So, and I live in Austin, Texas. Yeah. And so it's, it's one really of the, serious. It's so serious. Like uh, every sport, cheerleading, like all of that is, is right now at six years old. I have a four and a six year old. So it's like right now at six, I'm seeing it start. Well, if you don't start now, it's never going to happen. You know? <laughs> <laughs> God forbid they don't start dancing yeah, when they're 18 forbid. and then they become a star. <laughs> I have so many friends who started late. I love that accent. <laughs> Thank you, you so much. You don't need to be doing that accent <laughs> all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and speaking of like accents and affectations and voice and stuff like that, that just brings me in. Look at me. Look at me conversationally. Well, in. Just don't write in. Is, is your audio drama, which is what we, we can definitely talk about it. We yes. can talk about that. And you do have a star-studded cast. Yes. Don't you feel cool saying audio drama? Yes. I feel really fascinated it's like cellar door. when I say it. It's like a beautiful cellar thing to say. Door. Cellar door is apparently the most beautiful word phrase that you can say. I don't believe that. I don't either. Cause <laughs> cellar like, door. Like a white mocha scary. for me is, is definitely a beautiful that word. That sounds hot. <laughs> <laughs> Diet Coke. That, that's oh, also that kind of that just feels good. good. Not sponsored. Right? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so our first season was a star-studded cast. And and we did that in the pandemic yeah. um, for the Bystander season one. It was sending people microphones. Um, and we had uh, Kristen Chenoweth, who was a favor, and Jane Lynch, who was a favor. And from there on, it was like, let's just reach out to everybody we know who has semi of a name. But for season two, we did get a casting director, which was huge for us and so exciting because we had an outreach that was even bigger and more entertaining than we could have imagined. Like Who's we had we? people, so um, for 
uh, as executive producers, which is, includes myself, Jacqueline Hales and Ash Lansian, who are the creator and writers, mm-hmm. um, Nick Blair Wilfong, and then we have Black Label Media, who mm-hmm. did Cesario and La La Land. They came on as um, executive producers for season one. And then season two, we have another executive producer. Her name is Marilee Stafford, who is like our I biggest feel like I've champion. Heard her name. She's incredible. Why have I it's, heard her she's name? brand new to the business. Oh, okay, then I haven't heard her name. Yeah, but <laughs> she is just the biggest advocate for like, happiness like you meet her and she just exudes joy and that's kind of what you want in in your a hundred percent in your back pocket because it makes you feel good a hundred everything you do it's like oh thank you so much yeah I mean like you you tend to get pretty jaded over time and like I think that's why uh, people fall out of love with certain yeah. jobs that they have. It cannot just be this industry. It's like, you know, if you're not surrounding yourself with enough of that enjoyment, that, that joy, like you're saying, the yeah. excitement, um, you got to move on. <laughs> yeah. It's very draining. It, to be I, That's what we keep telling her. We're like, listen, this could get old really fast. Mm-hmm. Please don't ever lose what you have because mm-hmm. your magic is so palpable mm-hmm. and you need that every step of the way. So now how are you guys recording it now that we're... So season two, um, we we did send microphones out, but mm-hmm. we have Wayne Knight who mm-hmm. is... Now that name sounds familiar. Why do I know that name? Wayne Knight is in Jurassic <laughs> Park. He Perfect. plays Newman on... Uh, oh my God, yes, yes Wayne Knight. Newman. Yes, yes. Newman. <laughs> <laughs> um, so cool. So cool. He... Your casting directors are killing it. Killing it. Um, Schwab and Rodriguez, who worked under um, Rob from Glee, who did Glee as well. That is great. But they also were like, I don't know. Anyways, everybody everybody who made this podcast just fills my heart up to the brim because they they just work so hard. Mm. Um, And I think all around it was such a a big team effort. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, So Kathleen Turner and Wayne Knight both wanted to be in studio Mm -hmm. and that made our audio engineer very happy it sounds so good um so moving forward we'll obviously go into studio and darren chris did it as well so it was Uh really fun to like sit in that booth and watch um you know them direct them in their episodes Mm -hmm. and then be able to like turn the mic on and be like hey it's heather from the from the from the ether will you please do it this way um that's very different to be like directing your friend yeah like darren right are you close wait was it darren was on glee yes i'm like am i like i'm mom brained today i think you're doing great (laughs) thank you thank you very much i'm really enjoying i will stop trying to be insecure now i will just i will try to be confident you're vulnerable i'm so i'm the most vulnerable in this in this conversation (laughs) today um but no but i thought with like with darren it's like he what, what is that like to be like actually like no i'm gonna direct to my friend or is he just like so chill oh my god Darren is the chillest person in the whole world he will just hang Mm -hmm. he's just down to do it like do whatever yeah Um, oh you want it that way sure I'll do that yeah sure why not (laughs) or if it doesn't make sense to him he'll be like I don't really get it but I'm just gonna try it anyways which is kind of what you want as an actor it's like if you don't get it you're just gonna do it and if it works then it works and if the director's like yeah I liked it the way you did it the first time you know it just so yeah we call that assuming the position assuming assuming the position Mm -hmm. I remember them calling it that in um, acting class actually I was in the same acting class school as Luke Cook who's in your um, in your audio and he's he's also been a friend of the podcast and he's extremely talented so I, I know like when I saw those names Kathleen Turner came up Kathleen and I did a, um, during 2020, we did a, a play reading together, which might as well have been of an audio drama, right? Right. On Zoom. And uh, I remember her telling me, she's like, oh, you're moving to Austin. She's like, oh, no, that's my best Kathleen Turner. She's like, they drink a lot of whiskey there. <laughs> you're going to like it. It's great. They know how to drink their whiskey. I just was uh, like. She, she is so fun to listen to. Everything that comes out of that woman's everything. mouth. Like is iconic. Even if she's mad, I don't even care. Oh, if she's I don't want to get her mad. If she's <laughs> mad, I don't even. I'm still mad that she is mad. Yeah. Because it's still funny to watch and listen to everything yeah. that she says. She's a pro. I, I think you know she's she a very like a pro. old school, right? Like, like, and I also think when you think about like old school um, actresses that had to like ad like fiercely advocate for themselves. Yeah. And sometimes like I remember working with um, Elaine Stritch. Elaine mm-hmm. Stritch passed away a few years ago, I think now, but she was like, did you ever watch a 30 Rock? She was um, Alec, yes. ba- Alec Baldwin's mother. Oh my God. 
And she's like this, like, she's a very, very iconic um, musical theater person and movie person. Somebody who works all the time. Betty Buckley ended up replacing her, and she's oh. also extremely, and it was just this, like, little, like, off-Broadway show. But Elaine Stritch had this huge tantrum when we were, like, in rehearsals for this off-Broadway, whatever. And and I just remember being like, this is so fabulous to watch. Not that she's in pain, no. but that, like, this is what it took. This is what it took for people to take you seriously as a female. And all a guy has to say is like, I don't like that or this doesn't work and it's fine. Yeah. And then a girl has to throw a tantrum. And yeah. Like, Why? <sighs> Just listen the first time. But li tell me, because I know that you've been, you've, you've spoken out about like toxic work environments and maybe some, you know, whatever's people that you've worked Lord with. Lord Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking like, like what is the difference between somebody who is advocating for themselves and and then also somebody else who might be serving their ego or like what is it is it mental health issue what is it i don't know i honestly I, i'm somebody who's all about respect and workplace and i love to to do my service as a, my job and things and if there is an issue it's obviously hard maybe as a female, but also somebody in the workplace who's a little bit younger um, to speak up in, a, in the right way. And I think when you grow up in the industry and maybe in certain parts of the industry, like you assume that you have the right in any, in any space. You know what I mean? Like whether you're on set, whether it's on camp, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. But I think there is a way to direct it in the right way, like in private having a respectful conversation with people, mm. not in front of an entire crew or not addressing one person in, t in front of a t an entire crew. For me personally, that's how it feels. So you're saying, what I'm hearing you say, is that a person who might not be able to regulate themselves in a, a teamwork environment, such yeah. as being on set with like uh, co-stars and whatnot, is generally dysregulated and they they lack maybe perspective. It's almost like now as a mom, I start to see people so differently in like that mentality of your child isn't giving you a hard time, they're having a hard time. You spoke so beautifully just then. Thank you. The way you said dysregulated, I was can like, we be, wow. Can we be friends all the time, please? <laughs> <laughs> I need you in my life. You're beautiful. Thank you. This is a, entirely accurate. There is no is. regulation. Yeah. for the teamwork atmosphere. And, and I'm it, all about, I grew up in dance, so like it's I teamwork. have a full team yeah. that I'm working with. Interesting. And then there's like a star or the face of, or the number one on the call sheet or number two, and they get paid, you know what I mean? There's like, but even if that's the case, the, the, the like, emotional protocols should be the same for everyone, like across the board. I know. And, and that's why, like when we talk about when you're saying like people who are growing up and then sometimes talk about being dysregulated from not having perspective in that work environment, then they go out into the real world. And it's almost like when I talk to my husband about his service in the military and it's like when they go from the military to civilian life, mm -hmm. so many of them are dealing with a very different set of of ideas of who they are and the, <laughs> yeah, the way they associate themselves. And a lot of times they'll tell them that they're better than civilians because they're like, you gave yourself to your nation. And so you are not a civilian. You are something else. You are other. Oh, sure. So then when they're put back and there's really no rehabilitation for them, there's like a two week thing that they go through. That's like really just paperwork. It all makes me really sad. That yeah. This happens. Yeah. It, it it's where we he and I could kind of have intersectionality in mental health. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it was like child actor and veterans. Like, what do they how have do in common? How you go live your life after you were a star of, at how old you were? It's like it's just the brain. It's, it's like so the weird. brain being like, I was this. Now what am I? Mm -hmm. And and so um so yeah, I think that if 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 you, in talking this out with you, I thought you actually brought up a wonderful way of saying that. And that you're like, people aren't having this perspective. They're just going from, you know, one one set to one set or one TV show or one Broadway show. And it's like they think that they can kind of bring themselves the same each time. But it's really you're going from one team to the next team to the next team in yeah. service of that team. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think also we could do a better job of like 
training production. And that's kind of why I want to get into production and like executive producing because cool. just like learning how to address the atmosphere and also work by the book. You know, there are reasons why we have like, like what's your sign? <laughs> I'm an Aquarius. Oh, I love that. Yeah. My husband's an Aquarius. I love Aquarius. Yeah. Aquarians. I love unity. Mm. I like, yeah. Um, I, I just think knowing all, and, and then also you're making mistakes as a producer and, and, and having a whole team and, and also trying to serve the creative team, Ash and Jacqueline, who worked so darn hard mm -hmm. and like made a killer on this podcast, just how hard they worked and like endless nights and days of writing and, and producing and notes and like all, all of this. It's like, how do I serve that greater purpose and also be their advocate? And then I'm making mistakes and they're making mistakes and it's like, how do we come together again and then and then be a team and like talk this through and it's like I love that I love yeah. that we're still still doing that that's great you just have leadership skills <laughs> that's what it sounds like to me <laughs> so then where can everyone find it so you can listen on, two. on apple podcast mm -hmm. um and the bystanders podcast.com there may be talks of opening it up to everybody. So at, right now, um, we are asking for a subscription for $2, a measly $2, yeah. um, to listen to season two. Season one is still free, and we give you the first episode for free as well of season two. Um, uh, but then, you know, we worked so hard at this for the last couple years, and and we we, we just ask that, that listeners support and, mm -hmm. you know, give the generosity of the cost of a Diet Coke or... Mm -hmm. A, you know, a snack at the vending machine, whatever mm -hmm. it is, it's $2 mm -hmm. to listen. So it's also them supporting you guys doing this sort of on an independent scale. Right. And that's very timely. Yes. You know, like we, we, I'm seeing that, that people are truly starting to understand like what it is that artists go through and how unsustainable that is. And I'm gonna, honestly, a society with art artist is, is truly not. It's crazy. It's uh, it's it's not a society I'd like to be around. That's for sure. <laughs> um, so what are your goals then? Like right now, I know that you've been doing dance content. Are you are you choreographing? Are you going to those? Mm -hmm. Are you judging? What is what is going yeah, on? Yeah, I do all of that. Oh, I'm a teacher. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I'm working with students all weekend. I also teach mental health as well mm -hmm. uh, on the convention circuit. Have you ever met? Sorry to interrupt you. No. Have you ever met Sabrina Bryan? She was in the Cheetah Girls. She works. Um, in that world of, I don't of, know her. Oh, I would love you, but guys I to know, connect. I know her face. Okay, do you know? Yes, but she's never met, never she's looked. on the shorter side. She's absolutely adorable, blonde, blonde lady. Okay, yeah, it's I'll clicked. show you a picture. Um, but she, she teaches. She teaches. She's out in Orange County. Okay, and she, um, she's just it's wild to me. She's like a cheetah girl, but then she like went back to her dance roots and she like teaches. Amazing. And it must be so great to like. I do teach. love to teach and I love to, you know, do that. But I also just like, I, I want to like be told what to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> it is like, such a privilege to like just show up to set and be like, where's my give mark? Me a, just give me a, a couple lines. <laughs> I'll be a crafty. And let me, I'll do whatever you want me to do. I just want somebody to tell me what to do for a bit. I love I'm that. I'm sure I'll get sick of it, but like... Yeah, I just need to not have to come up with ideas <laughs> a, for a little bit. Girl, I, I feel you. <laughs> Are there things that you generally try to tell your kids? Um, like what? what my students or my children? Your, I'm sorry, your students. My students. Yeah. In class. Well, dance class is a whole different thing because when, I, when I'm working with them, I'm like a guest. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not their everyday teacher and right. everyday teachers. But like, that means you can also make them. like a really big impact in the moment oh, that you go and see sure. them, right? For yeah. sure. I always tell them to advocate for themselves. Okay. I always introduce my pronouns um, just to make kids feel safe, even at okay. a young age. Okay. Because we do have, you know, we're in the arts. So we mm -hmm. have an assortment of, of dancers and we need to allow children to feel safe. Well, again, it is a body focused art. Exactly. And so. And that's what we're trained for. It's yeah. Like, making you feel as comfortable as you can in your body in your body amen okay um and I, yeah just class i mean there's also respect so i'm also like trying not to be the biggest a-hole in the world but i'm like if you're here come on show me you're here like run out and and dance don't just like walk on stage you know we have a lot of kids from the pandemic mm -hmm. who were used to zoom mm -hmm. and so they don't know like urgency or they don't know like the crowd of a room they mm -hmm. just know their screen so mm, that's so sad i talk about like um like it, it just mental health in general um you know we talk about sleep 
hygiene, exercise, intake, and social. And intake is the one I you try and You talk about all of this? All of this. Like when you're a guest? Is yes. that like one afternoon or like Well, we do a, a teacher's class. Okay. So I usually just talk to the parents and I also oh, ask how funny. they like implement mindfulness into their studios. And just asking the teachers and the parents how they do that will just give other teachers and parents ideas to do it in their own We need studio. that for actors. We need that for child actors. We you for should child actors. We need to talk about this. That's oh, they wonderful need it that so you're bad. because talking to the parents about that really makes them start to think mm-hmm. and take like a moral uh, inventory about like, okay, is what is mindfulness? Like I've yeah. never even thought about this, but they're telling me we need to do it. So I guess we got to start thinking that way. It's almost Simple. like, it's almost like you have to bring the horse to water and be like, yeah. your kid's not going to book unless you drink. So like, that's really, really interesting. Yeah. I love that you do that. Yeah, it's great. Um, and I always, I, if I get time in the class at the end, I try and like a lot 15 minutes to just go over this. And sometimes it's boring for them. They're like, stop talking about this stuff. Some kids really genuinely get involved. But um, like just to keep yourself in check, especially with your intake. And so I describe like, okay, obviously we know McDonald's mm-hmm. is not very good for you. You know when you eat it that you're going to get tired. Mm-hmm. We, you know, obviously you're aware of that, but there's also intake as far as like social media and TV and like what you're putting in your body. That's also food because mm-hmm. your your brain is a computer. So those are things I just try to not talk yet. about. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Almost. <laughs> Maybe someday. Unfortunately. Only in the compassible world. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Not the the eyes. Not, I just remember the eyes being computers. Oh my god, girl! Like, not the reboot that we want. Not the reboot. If Glee did get rebooted, would you do it? Ah, uh, yeah. I think if we had like a kumbaya, <laughs> you know, like if we all sat in a circle and talked about our feelings. Oh wow, it's like that. Okay. Yeah, I get that. But I mean, still, it's a job. You, yeah. You give me a sheet of paper and you tell me what to do. I'm gonna be. You're there like, and I I'm want gonna that. Show up. <laughs> tell me what to do. <laughs> tell me what to do. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much for yeah. coming. And, you know, please go check out The Bystanders. Season two, star-studded cast. Are Kathleen you not Turner. in it? I am. I okay, play great. the news anchor. She's in it. She's a news anchor. I'm the news that. anchor, Carol. I like that's a good... <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, Luke Cook. I, I mean, you talked about him yeah. already. And you had a conversation with him. Margaret Cho, right? Margaret Cho. Kathleen Tur- Mother... And Turner <laughs> and and we have Beth Dover and and Jolo Truglio, Trulio yeah. who are a couple in real life so we had them record their lines together oh. in in their house and it was magical oh, just the amazing. takes that we have I wish we could just Wait, release who those. Now? Uh, Beth Dover oh okay I was thinking was of Sofia Orange Vergara and who was the guy oh, she was just damn. divorced no his name's like a Joe Megan L- 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 or yeah. something <laughs> the hunky hunky werewolf Joe guy yeah. Joe, Joe, I thought that, that, oh God, I need more. No, Joe Lotrulio was on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Yes, of course. Yes. Of course. Yeah. He, uh, they, they came I'm on tuning together. In. I'm tuning into your audio drama. Please this do. sounds so good. It's, I've done audio dramas before. I know how much work they are. I was in, um, that, uh, it's actually very popular. They're very, very popular. They are popular. People love them. Um, you should do one live at some point. That would be really <gasps> fun. And I want to put my name in the hat if you You're ever You're coming want. on. Okay, I would love to be a co-anchor with you as a, as a news lady. <laughs> and we could have like beef But we have drama. to talk like this. Oh, don't you know? <laughs> yeah, I love that. Thank you so much for coming, Thanks Heather. Thanks for having me. Go listen to the bystanders. <laughs>